Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have something from Germany called Emil. E-M-I-L-L. -L. Don't forget the little L here, that's important. And this is a single malt whiskey from Germany. Interesting enough, I get this as, it's actually well done by the way, the, the, um, the packaging. I get this nice big package and then I pull out, I'm going to say this little skinny bottle. And then also I get the following, I get this nice little present box. This present box is absolutely beautiful, um, gold, um, well done, the bottle fits in here, just incredibly tight, um, well done, a perfect present for people who are looking for this. Now this is basically the third bottling of a whiskey that I know of here in Germany. This is called Feinwerk. Uh, fine, F-I-N-E, um, German F-E-I-N, and VAC would be some type of hand of craftsmanship. So this was actually um, finished in a port wine barrel. 42%, 79 euros, and whiskey base 178836. Now this whiskey, also from um, Emil, and it's actually from the Scheibel um, distillery in the Black Forest, is um, actually the winner in 2019 and 2020 of the best German whiskey ever. <laughs> so the best German whiskey. So, um, and that's called Kraftwerk. So um, actually we can translate the word of a vac with a, um, a story of a building, the floors. We can translate it with a handwerk as in craftsmanship. And we can also translate the word vac as in a power plant. Kraftwerk would be power plant, and this would be more of a fine craftsmanship. Why power plant? Because it's 58.7% ABV. This is 89 euros, and this goes under the number uh, whiskey base of 138967. This actually won three different awards um, in the year 2019 and 2020 for the best German whiskey on the market at that time. Now, I bought it because of that, and I waited. Um, it was a little bit up on my shelf, and I moved house, and then I finally found, oh, yeah, let's do this, because someone said, Jason, could you buy this bottle and share it? So I bought this bottle, shared it. It was gone fairly quickly, but I also added this bottle. And I said, hey, why don't we buy it as a set? And people were like, no, I don't want this. I only want that. I was like, okay. And that was also a good example of the FOM, um, FOMO, FOMO, fear of missing out. This was new. They were afraid they'd miss it. And this was old news from two years ago um, or a year and a half ago. And so I was like, I don't care about what happened a year and a half ago. I just want to be able to, to try the new stuff. All right, so um, they have their own hammered pot stills. They created themselves, or someone created for them from copper. And they have the nice little lane line arm that goes over there. Um, they do use, um, I think, if I read correctly, they do use German um, malted barley, probably from Bamberg. And um, they have um, their own little... Um, they have a little uh, mill house. It used to be a mill house in the middle of the Black Forest in the north um, where you can actually go visit them. And one of the interesting things is they say here, this is um, double distilled on the hand hammered um, pot stills of this exclusive whiskey distillery in the typical um, area of, of the Black Forest. And it says here it's um, aged in oak casks over four different floors, stories, in a historic um, mill. We have ice cold and summer warm temperatures accompany also the humidity of the river beside the A-mill and making that to its actually pacemaker. So, good. Oh, I forgot to pour the fine vac. Shame on me, Jason. Um, now, this lid, I don't know if you've ever seen this type of lid before. This is massive. I mean, a quarter would be the inside part of here. So you can actually see the word Emil in there. You have the gold stripes. You actually have a artificial cork in there. This bottle, if I may show this bottle in a second, is a piece of art. All right. So not just the shape, all right, sorry, but look, you have tiny little roofs here, 
look at the amount of glass at the bottom here. This is amazing. This thing weighs like five pounds. It's amazing. Well done with the um, graphics. Well done with the label. Well done with the bottle design. I must admit, um, I'm absolutely um, positively um, surprised and impressed with the quality of the presentation. Now, the question is, will the whiskey live up to um, the bottle? So first of all, you look at the color here, you will see that this is a red color. That's the port wine influencing this. This is the cast strength, um, and this is the 42% port finish. Now, um, there are many, many, many distilleries in Germany. Why? Because we like our schnapps. You've had schnapps, you've had peppermint schnapps, you've had um, maybe other types of schnapps in your life. Now, this is something we, I've never actually seen peppermint, peppermint schnapps over here in Germany. I've lived here for over 30 years, so I'm sorry, but we do like a lot of other types of schnapps. And so you actually have a, a company founded on the 11th of November, um, 1899, that started making schnapps in the Black Forest. And now you have a company that said, hey, 2014, whiskey's becoming a thing. Why don't we also make whiskey? And so they're using basically the same type of copper pot stills and column stills, usually a hybrid situation, which they produce all of their other liquors and schnapps and other spirits on. And they're also making whiskey. So they're not exclusively making whiskey. Now that could be good and that could be bad. My experience shows me at the moment that beer um, makers actually make better whiskey than schnapps makers do. Why? Because uh, basically the whole fermentation, the whole malting process, the whole mashing process is basically identical and identical to what we have with beer. If you have good beer, all you need to do is have the cut points right and you have a good whiskey and put in good wood, you're happy. Now over here we have maybe um, a system that is a little bit different. Um, very, very many people in Germany like to have a clear, a perfectly distilled spirit. And for a good whiskey, sometimes you need to have a little bit of some other congingers in there, a little bit of those other type of fatty acids need to get in there. So you need to have the cut points a little bit wider than you'd normally do for a spirit over here in Germany. And that's something many, many um, producers, spirit producers that are now also making whiskey, have to learn over weeks, ages, um, and weeks, years, maybe even over ages. And so what we have here is something, and that's what I don't know, did they use German oak? Did they use ex-bourbon casks? Did they use American oak? Did they use uh, European oak? No information whatsoever about that, any place, neither on the website or any place else I could find online. Unfortunately, so over here, you have an interesting spirit. Um, the 58% is fairly well integrated, but it's, um, you do notice it's actually matured in oak. Now, you're going to say, oh, Jason, come on, everyone matures in oak. No, in Europe, we don't have to age in oak. Actually, in all of Europe, we don't have to age in oak. Only the countries that decide to change and actually add onto the European regulations for whiskey have to actually clarify and stipulate oak. For example, Scotland. Scotland stipulated oak casks. Ireland does not because it's part of the European Union. Germany does not because we're part of the European Union. And our own stipulations just say, hey, the same thing European Union does. In Scotland, they have the SWA, the Scotch Whiskey Association, and they actually have rules on top of the European rules. Now, they're no longer in Europe, but they're going to keep their own rules, and we're going to keep our rules. All right, so over here with the port, they do smell very similar. I get a type of, I'm sorry, a type of mushroom type of moment, um, dunnage moment, mushroom, a little bit of a, a dark, dank type of moment here. Um, there is the fruity red moment behind all that. It is malty. It has a little bit of a spelt moment as well, um, a type of grain that's a little bit more of a whole whole grain type of moment. It does not smell like a typical single malt from Ireland. It does not smell like a typical sorry typical single malt from Japan. It does not smell like a typical single malt from Scotland. It smells very similar to many things I have had in Germany. And not every single malt um, producer here in Germany makes great whiskies.
They might have great design, but the whiskey itself may not be great. All right, um, let's try this. Um, it's a video about the fine vac. So let's start off here with a 42%. 80 euros. Um, cheers. Mm -hmm. The port cask influence is more than evident. It's very, very sweet. Um, I'm going to do this. It comes in at the very beginning. It's like, is this port or is this um, whiskey? Oh, yeah, it's whiskey. And then it's, oh, no, it's port. And then it's, oh, no, it's whiskey. That's too far. So we're going to start here and go there, go there, go there. And towards the end, it's like, okay, and the end port wins. That port influence here is very, very, very strong. Um, sometimes I say, do you want some whiskey with your port or do you want some port with your whiskey? And the first one, do you want some whiskey with your port, means there's more port influence than whiskey influence. And that's what I'm getting here. I'm getting a lot more port than I'm whiskey. I like to have a little bit of port with my whiskey rather than a little bit of whiskey with my port. Um, okay, it's not bad, but it's not good. This is a C minus whiskey. I do have that whole grain moment in there the entire time. It's not a bitterness. It's not an old used barrel. It's not a tannin moment. It's a whole grain type of moment. Um, the sweetness of the port really, really overpowers a lot of other things going on in this. And it's not bad. Now, um, 79 euros over here um, in Germany buys me a Glendronach 15 revival. What would I rather have? The revival. Come on, we're not going to joke each other here, are we? I would rather have um, <laughs> a revival than this any day of the week. Why? Because the revival is just an awesome whiskey. And this is the question we have to ask ourselves. Yes, this is handcrafted. Probably somebody put on the labels by hand. Probably someone put that. Oh, I didn't even show this to you here. Um, they actually had a wire cage around this. And they actually had here this nice little thing um, to uh, seal it for uh, consumer protection. I've never, ever seen this in my life. Um, this was a wire cage, and I had to cut through the wire. Um, a lot, of lot of um, moments of thought went into the design, the presentation, and the packaging of this whiskey. Wonderful. You should win a prize for that. But the whiskey is not a prize-winning whiskey. Oh, by the way, this did win prizes. This won the 2019 Best German Whiskey of the Year. It won the 2020 World Spirits Award for Best German Whiskey of the Year. So let's try this and see if this was better back then. This is almost a year and a half old, two years old compared to this. It's both, both of these are non-H statements. 58.7%. Let's try it. Okay, let's put a little bit of water in this, bring it down to like 48%. Let's try it again. Maybe that's the secret to this whiskey. Hmm. Ah, it's got a little bit of a um, pine sap moment here. Not my cup of tea, to be honest. I have no idea. I'm looking for a word. Um, I have no idea how this actually um, won the um, Whiskey of the Year. Yeah, exactly. Um, spelt. S-P-E-L-T is what I keep on getting. A dingle wheat, a hulled wheat. Um, it's, there's also, sorry, I'm speaking German here. There's also a spelt walnut bread. Um, that's what I'm getting, a little bit of that. Um, it's very whole grain type of whiskey. I don't know if you want whole grain in your whiskey or not. I'm not really keen on that. Let's get this a little bit so you get the colors here. Um, is it a bad whiskey? Definitely not. Is it a great whiskey? Definitely not. Is it an okay whiskey? Yes. Uh, but I'm not willing to pay 90 euros. Yes, there are 0.7 liter bottles here at least. 
the great packaging. You get a good little box as well with it and so on. But I'm not willing to pay that money for this type of whiskey for this experience. This actually does not evoke any type of wow moment in my life. If I'm going to put 80, 90 euros on the table, I want a little bit of wow. All right, at least with my whiskeys. All right, thank you very much for watching. Um, beautiful, beautiful design of the bottles here. My question of the day is exactly that. What other bottle designs can you recommend where you go, wow? Um, I must admit, look at those riff r here. Um, very, very, very well done. Um, solid. I mean, as I said, these things you could use basically as weights to do some like barbells. Um, well, well designed here. Great packaging. Fantastic. What other type of um, bottles can you say, hey, they had great packaging? All right, both of these are going to get a basically a C uh, minus. Both of these are going to get a D minus for value for money. Um, this even, a, okay, both the same. This is 10 euros less and it tastes a little bit, uh, it tastes a little bit less good than this, poorer than that. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for liking. Thank you very much for giving German whiskey a chance if you ever find it. Um, I can recommend Stork Rye Whiskey. I can recommend Nine Springs Whiskey. Um, I can recommend um, Ellsburn Whiskey. I can recommend St. Killian Whiskey. I can recommend a few other whiskeys. And if you want to know them, just write down in the comments or contact me at whiskeyjason at gmail.com. All the best. See you soon. Whiskey Jason here. Bye-bye.